I've just got a new delivery and I think I know what's in that box. I can't wait to show you. Hi, I'm Dom and welcome to my workshop. Right, let's get some of this stuff unboxed. And look at the pile of it. Thank you so much, Pile Weld. You really are spoiling me. Gloves are so important when you're welding. That's, but ones like this, they're not just any old gloves. They've got this leather lining, which is really good when you're handling with hot metal. And when you're welding, things do warm up quite quickly. Oh, they are absolutely brilliant. They're nice and lightweight, so you can actually feel what you're doing still. These are your typical welding gloves. And they're just, they're, personally, I think they're a bit ridiculous. It feels like you're just wearing a big, mitten you just can't feel anything being able to feel and just sort of have a more sort of sensation in your hand and just compared to that these are really good obviously not quite as safe as this but with the leather lining i think they're perfectly safe enough i'm quite excited about this i've got a new welding helmet i've needed a new welding helmet for so long the one i've had i've been using it for years and technology's come on a long way since i bought my welding helmet and you'll be pleased to know i've stuck with the flaming theme <laughs> Look at that. That's nice. It's got a perfectly clear lens. And that's an absolute game changer, that is. A regulator, essential. You'll be needing one of these. Oh, this is like Christmas. MIG welding torch, perfect. Goodness, this is a posh one. So I've got controls on here for voltage and I'm assuming voltage and wire speed, but I've never had one like this. For all these years, I've been using a normal bog standard MIG welding torch that's just got the trigger on the bottom, go and stop. And all the other controls are done on the machine, which is fine, it's got me by. This is gonna be interesting, brilliant. The TIG torch, oh, no controls on this one. You can get these with trigger controls and, and wheels and all sorts of buttons on the top, but I just prefer a foot pedal and keeping this as simple as possible, that's lovely. I've been spoiled. What a good Sunday this is turning out to be. <laughs> They've even sent me a jacket. Perfect. This would be good for when I'm walking Wendy. This is lovely. You're not gonna be wearing this whilst I'm welding though. Oh, I have never owned one of these. This is a welding jacket and it's made of a really thick leather. It's super, super hard wearing. When you start welding, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of sparks and spatter and bits of metal going everywhere, especially when you're welding overhead and all the sparks come down on you and they just, they burn straight through your clothes. So many years, I've ruined so many jumpers. If I'd have just put one of these on, it would stop all of that. Pop that up. What do you reckon? That's all the bits and bobs. Time to open the welder. How exciting. Oh, here we go. It's been a very long time since I've opened a box with a brand new welder in it. This is a big day for me. That's the stick welding torch. Look at that. Right, that is my plug installed. It is quite rare that I actually ever get any brand new equipment in this workshop. Usually most of the things I buy are second hand and you know, pre-used. So for Parwell to lend me this machine, I am really, really grateful. So thank you so much Parwell, first of all, for making this whole video possible. I just wanna say very quickly, I am definitely not a professional welder. I do a lot of metal work and I do a lot of welding, but I'm self-taught. I've just taught myself in my back garden to do all of this stuff. All of what I'm gonna really talk about in this video is my opinion and the way I do things. If you've got a different opinion and a different way of doing things, I would love to hear them. Put it in the comments below. I, I do read them and I'd love to see them and share some knowledge between everyone. I just wanna start at the very beginning. What is welding? What are we doing? Well, there are lots of different types of welding. MIG, TIG, stick, arc, Gas, laser, this is like a pop quiz trivia now. Uh, 
That's it, I've got no more. Fine, there's at least six different types of welding. In the most basic possible terms, it's using high electrical current. Torch in your hand is the positive. You have a negative, so you ground the actual part, the metal part that you're trying to work on. You're making a circuit. The power comes through the torch in your hand and it's arcing onto the piece that you're welding. And that like lightning bolt that's arcing onto that part makes it get so hot that it melts the metal. And as it melts, it's down to you to control that melting pool and manipulate it around to then fuse the two pieces together. You're using electricity to melt metal. Having that ability to stick two pieces of metal together is just, for me, I feel absolutely priceless. It changes your mind and you kind of start thinking about things differently. You know, when you're trying to find where to hang your ladders on the wall, it's like, oh, hang on. I could weld a bracket. I know this probably looks quite daunting because I've got everything here laid out, but I'm covering everything. You really don't need all of this stuff. Before you buy a welder, have a think about what you want to weld. If you're making furniture and you're welding bits of iron and bits of angle iron and bits of box section and sort of thicker material together, a MIG welder would work well for that. If you've got a classic car and you want to start welding repair panels in, which is into very thin sheet metal, I would suggest a TIG welder. The MIG and TIG processes do require a, a gas bottle. You need to have a gas bottle. So if you're in the middle of nowhere and you have no access to gas and you don't want to get the gas bottles and get into that, then stick welding may be your option because it's very basic. You need a very simple machine. They're very portable. They're probably the smallest of the machines. You don't need any gas. You just need the machine, that handle, the holder, and then the welding rod, and that is it. You can get a neater weld with MIG, and particularly TIG. Well, let's start with MIG, because I think that is probably the most common starter way. That's how I started, anyway. This is the torch for MIG welding. I actually have a MIG welder and a TIG welder. This beautiful machine from Parweld, thank you very much, does both of them. So this will do MIG, TIG, and stick welding, and it will actually do TIG in AC and DC for aluminium as well as steel. It literally does everything. I've got everything in one machine, so this is absolute dream for me. All right, first things first, get this machine up and running and ready to weld. Next thing up, welding wire. This is MIG welding wire, and you can get this from, I mean, all sorts, tool station, loads of places have got it. This is a five kilo roll, which is quite large. You can get bigger, but you can also get smaller. Make sure whichever machine you end up getting, if it's a sort of a, a beginner machine, like a smaller beginner machine, five kilo roll might not fit on it. It's all to do with the actual physical size of it and this spindle size in the middle. There's also a diameter of wire measurement to look at. This is 0.8 and that is in millimeters. So that's 0.8 of a millimeter diameter for this wire. The thicker the welding wire, the thicker the material that you're welding. This spindle sticking out here is where you slide on the roll. That goes on there. All right, don't let go of the end, whatever you do, because that, <laughs> that is sprung, and if that shoots off, it's just gonna spiral out of control inside there. And then all you're trying to do is feed it through this first hole, get it through there. Once it pops out the end, then it'll go through the roller. There's a little groove in that roller. All the machines will have that and make sure that the wire sits in that groove. It's really important that all this part is set up right, otherwise you're just gonna have problems down the line. Poke it through the roller, and then get it through that last little brass bit, and then if I keep going, you should see it come out the ends. Coming out there, Dan? welding torch is now fixed in position. I need to turn the machine on next. Then I can use the motor there that drives that gear to push that welding wire all the way through here, all the way round, and then out the end here. Round, 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 wire's coming round. There we go. Brilliant. That's the positive side of our circuit. Done. This is the negative side. This is my first victim. This is what I'll be practicing on. Just a piece of mild steel, the sort of thing you'd find in a scrap bin somewhere, which is actually, you know what, that's how I learn. I would go around industrial estates all the time where they manufacture things and just rummage around through their scrap bins and find bits like that. Cut that in half and try and weld it back together again and weld a, a piece of bar on there and something up here. You'd end up with weird and wonderful structures and sculptures, but the best experience I think is, is actually just practicing and giving it a go. 
right, negative. That is just a case of clamping it onto the part and that completes the circuit. So this is my positive. And then as that wire comes out the end of the gun and touches or just about touches the part, that connects the circuit, current can pass through and that's what creates the arc, which then in turn melts the metal, which welds it together and then you've made a nice new piece of furniture. Cleanliness is so important. So I will be cleaning this before we start welding, but not only is it important to clean the area that you're gonna be welding, you want that to be nice and shiny metal. You need to connect that to the part that you're welding, not necessarily the new piece of metal that you're welding in, but that bit has to be clean as well. There's no point spending all the time sanding and cleaning and polishing up the area that you're going to weld, and then at the last minute you come and clamp your earth lead onto a rusty, manky, greasy part somewhere else, you'll have a really bad connection with the earth lead, and you, will, no matter what you do, you will get a terrible weld. So make sure wherever you clamp this earth lead onto, it is nice and nice and clean. Right, that's it, my material's nice and clean. Got everything else ready, I think I'm ready to go. Oh no, hang on. Oh, Dan, I haven't got any gas. Hang on, let me see. I don't suppose you're around. I haven't got any welding gas. I need some five percent. You can? Have you got any? If you've got any on the van? Oh man, brilliant! Honestly, you're an absolute lifesaver. Thank you so much. What size? What literage is that? That, bottle? that is a twenty litre bottle. Absolute lifesaver. He happened to be down the road with his van, doing a drop somewhere else and picking up something from his yard. And he's come and brought this round. So nice one. Thank you. You've saved the day. Oh, right, that's the gas sorted. Panic over, that was a bit of a stressful time. There's little white disposable bottles of welding gas. You can get them from like Halfords and, and probably Screwfix and places like that. They're very small, little portable bottles like that. They're rubbish. Once you open them and you put the regulator on the top, you can't close it again. And the regulators are never that good. It's always a sort of cheap, plasticky looking regulator that eventually leak. If you're gonna get into welding and you've gone to the lengths of buying a welder, buying a welding helmet, a grinder, the, all this other stuff, don't scrimp out on the gas. And the MIG and TIG both need gas. When you're using the MIG welder, you need a 5% mix, CO2 and argon. When you're using a TIG welder, you need pure argon. Simple as that. There seems to be this kind of myth that it's really difficult to get welding gas and you have to have a contract for the bottle and all this sorts of stuff. But trust me, you don't. You honestly don't. There's a company called Adams Gas. They've got reps all over the country, like the guy that just dropped this off. You have to put a deposit down on a bottle, but that's just a one-off payment that's not very much for the bottle. And then each time you refill it, call your rep, he comes around and swaps it out for you. This big bottle is 20 liters, which is big. That will last me, and I do quite a lot of welding, that will last me months. It is worth it 100%, invest a little bit more, get yourself a deposit on an Adams gas bottle. They do two litre bottles, which is what? That big? Tiny little bottle, it's 18 pounds for a refill. The little disposable bottles are about 12, 13 pounds last time I looked, for just for one. I think they're, they're probably similar size and you have to throw it away and buy another one next time. See those holes there? So the, the gas that's in the bottle comes out and comes through there and it's basically, a shielding gas. Once you've got that molten pool of metal that you're working with to stick the two pieces together, it's protecting that to stop it from getting oxidized and contaminated with the air. All that comes into contact with is the argon and CO2 that's in your welding bottle. So it's protect, basically protecting your weld puddle from the atmosphere. Right, you've decided, yes, thanks Dom, I wanna buy a MIG welder. Best bit of advice I would say is get the best welder you can afford. The prices range from 100 pounds or so, way up to thousands. This is quite a posh machine, it's quite fancy and it does all sorts of different things, it does everything basically, but you really don't need to start off with something like this. I started off with a really old knackered five pound welder that I got in a boot sale. Right at the heart of it, that five pound fully manual welder 
would do the same thing that this would. I've got the same two controls. I've got voltage, which is basically the amount of current, the power that's passing through it, and wire speed. And that is basically how quick the wire shoots out the end there. You might see the term synergic come up every now and then. And that basically means, I mean, it kind of baffles me a little bit. It's all this techie stuff, but all that really means is it's got preset for, uh, sort of memory in it and preset programs. So all you have to really tell it are a few basic instructions, like the wire that I'm using, the gas that I'm using, the material thickness, and it works out the voltage and the wire speed for me. I feel like that's a bit counterproductive if you're learning. The whole point of learning to weld is to understand the mechanics and the basics of what this machine does. The best way to learn that is by making the mistakes, having the wire speed way too fast and seeing what happens, having the voltage cranked right up and, and it burn a hole for a piece of three mil steel. Sometimes I would be welding and then adjusting the voltage as I'm welding and just kind of crank it down whilst I'm welding. Then you can literally see as you're going along with the weld, the voltage is getting less and less and less and you can see what's happening. Although these manual machines are great for you starting out, this clever little thing is absolutely perfect for me here. I could quite easily be one minute trying to weld up some stainless steel over there for something and then jumping over here to the Land Rover and then I'm welding aluminium. Then I could, someone could pop in and need something from the MOT station that needs a bit of MIG welding on a bracket sticking back on. This machine will do everything and it's even got an option in here. I can put presets in. If I'm doing a lot of welding like I am on this Defender on the coffee van, that aluminium box section, it's all the same, all the same box section, so I want the same set for that. So I'll, I might spend some time trimming it, getting it just where I want it. I can, I can preset that and save that. Busy workshop environment when I'm working on all different types of things. This is an absolute beast, it's, it's brilliant. A lot of the principles that I've been talking about and all the things that I've been going on about whilst I've been sitting here for about MIG welding really relate to TIG welding. They're, it's very, very similar. You have the same circuit of power, different torch, it looks slightly different. The adjustability is still on the voltage, which adjusts the current and the power that is coming out of here. It's got a bit of a reputation for being more difficult than MIG welding. The major difference, which is why I prefer TIG welding and why I find it a lot more flexible, is because when you're MIG welding, as soon as you pull that trigger, this wire is coming out. Yes, you can adjust the speed at which it comes out and you can slow it down and you can back off the voltage, but that wire is always coming out of there, otherwise you're not welding. With TIG welding, you've got a tungsten that's there. Instead of the voltage being controlled by the machine and the dials and switches and knobs on the machine, it's controlled by a foot pedal, which is like an accelerator. You just, you know, you can do that. I can adjust it on here, I can trim it on there, adjust my maximum point and then I've got a progressive accelerator pedal that I'll control with my foot. And then the lightning bolt, the power will be coming from there, create the arc across onto the part that you're welding, with the, which is earthed. The voltage is controlled by your foot, and then you're welding, you're off. Your right hand is holding the torch, you're melting that, the, the power and the heat is coming from this hand. And then the beauty of it is you have filler rods that you can buy separately. These are available in all sorts of different materials, different blends for steel, stainless steel, aluminium, brass. Depending on what you're welding, you just have to get a different filler rod. And then you can add the filler rod as, as you desire. So depending on what you're doing, you might want to add a little bit more, then it might be a little bit too much so you can slow down and you can get a nice rhythm going. Yeah, it's a bit more complicated because you're using both hands and one foot, but in the long run, I would say TIG welding is a lot more versatile, more adaptable. You can sit nice and comfortable, get yourself comfy and sit here and do some TIG welding nice and calm. If you're laying upside down underneath a car, it's more difficult to do TIG welding because you, you know your hands do different things. That's when you might prefer to do MIG welding. If you do decide to get your TIG welder, good on you. I would definitely recommend it if you can. Start with TIG welding would be awesome. A lot of the cheaper machines, the entry level TIG welding machines will be DC only. They will only do steel and stainless steel. To weld aluminium, you need one that is AC DC. If it says AC DC, that's basically alternating current and direct current. You need that alternating current to be able to weld aluminium. We're gonna to have to talk health and safety now. I'll be quick, but it's important. 
welding jacket, proper welding gloves, leather hands, leather palms. Things get very hot and you don't want to get burnt. By far the most important thing with welding, as well as the sparks and everything else, the light that it gives off, the arc, do not look at that. It's way too bright for your eyes to look at. You might see some people doing it where they squint and kind of don't quite look at it. Just don't, don't even go there. Get yourself a decent welding helmet. They shouldn't actually sell welders without coming with a welding helmet because you absolutely have to get one. I would highly recommend one with flames on because it looks awesome. So I can see through it. And then as it senses the welding arc, the bright light, it flicks down dark and then you can see what you're doing and you can comfortably look at it through this. It's really important to get a decent welding helmet. Okay, well that is the very, very basics of welding. Thank you very much to Parweld for letting me have a play with your brand new machine. It is beautiful, I really, really like it. Yeah, I would be really interested to hear some of your feedback on this video and if I've missed anything and I haven't covered anything you were hoping I would, leave me a comment below, I will read them and I'll try and do another video touching on any of those other areas that I've missed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.